so on the sales representative dashboard, the first dashboard that we're going to review with you, a few things to point out. Of course, it's going to show opportunity performance. Typical, typically, dashboards do show some uh, metrics regarding opportunities, but it'll have a little bit of a different twist. And then another component will show the user when and where action is needed soon. And we also have, for this fictional beverage company, a brand focus for the current quarter. So the sales rep will be able to see how they're um, trending towards the goals um, for that particular brand. And then we're going to use iframes um, to set up a few of the components as well. All right, so here is our sales rep dashboard. As you can see, we'll, we'll start in the upper left corner and show that first component there. Um, this is a funnel, which you're used to seeing um, relating to opportunities, but instead of showing the potential value of the opportunities by sales stage, this is showing the average time that an opportunity spends in any one sales stage. So for instance, on our last two stages in the funnel, negotiation and proposal, this particular user um, is able to see how much time each opportunity is taking uh, in, in that process. All right. Um, for this, uh, in the background, there is a custom entity set up that tracks the elapsed time. And then when the opportunity stage changes, a basic workflow tracks the ending time of the active stage and the beginning time of the new stage. For our example, we're not, um, we are excluding weekends and holidays. However, you could take it a bit further to exclude those uh, from the filter. OK, then moving to the right, the second chart is um, showing the user opportunities that they have that are closing in the next 25 days. This is a basic chart um, that, that shows the opportunities. And it also shows what stage they're in. So the user can quickly look at this and see if they're um, in line with what their averages are from the previous chart. So there would be a red flag to them if they were to see uh, opportunities that are uh, before the proposal or the negotiation stage. This one is, we will show you um, hands on how to put, set up this chart and put it on the dashboard. So more to come on that one. Then the third one is uh, around goal tracking. So the data behind this chart uses the basic setup of the goals management area in CRM and looks at invoice information for the actuals. You could also chart this to show um, the actuals based on one opportunities or orders. Um, as you can see, we'll pop this one out so we can see it um, a little bit closer. So as you can see on the left-hand side, those are our quarters, the four quarters in the year. And the blue shows the target or the goal, and the orange shows the actual. We can also um, toggle the view on this one to show prior years as well. All right, then the next area down is the territory management. Um, so this is a solution that we've set up that can give the user visual um, indicators on a map for the items that are in the list. So this is a good way for the sales rep to manage their territory. They can visibly see um, certain accounts or leads that are in a, in a particular area and kind of see them how they are located on a map. Very helpful when planning trips to a certain territory. All right. Then our next component, over to the right of it, is opportunity products um, with a brand focus. So for a particular quarter, uh, that our company, our fictional beverage company, is focusing on certain brands. So the rep can see which products and which brands um, that, that are of focus for the quarter and sort of how they're tracking towards it. This particular chart is showing us the um, average unit price. And in this one, we can toggle not only the view to show different views of information, so basically applying different filters to what we see in the chart, and we can also toggle to a different chart altogether. 
so switching from product focus to brand focus. Okay, and then if we navigate down, the last area of this dashboard um, includes uh, about, I think, five, five or six other charts. And technically what this is, um, this is all a different dashboard that we've embedded into our sales rep dashboard. We've done this through the use of an iframe, and this is something that we'll show you hands-on here um, a little bit later in the presentation. But basically, this can come in handy when a particular dashboard needs to show more than six components. Out of the box, Serum has a limit of showing six components on any dashboard. So you could use one of those components to embed uh, another dashboard in here. So that's what, what this is, and we'll show you that um, here in a second. All right, Chuck, I'll turn it over to you then. And we can do our hands-on. Okay, well, thanks, Melissa. So what we're going to do is we're going to build those two components that Melissa talked about. One is this embedded dashboard, and the other was this basic opportunities closing in the next 25 days chart. So to get started, whenever you're creating a, a chart or working on dashboards, it's, it's, it's a good tip to identify the fields that you want to include or you think you're going to need to include in your charts and, of course, in your views ahead of time so that you can save some time in, in terms of going back and forth. Now, in this particular chart, as you'll notice, we're just using the pipeline phase areas for it. So that's really the only field that we're going to need for this, for this chart. So what we're going to do is, is go in and create this chart quick. So I'm going to go into my settings, customizations, customize the system, expand this out a little bit. And then as soon as this comes up, we're going to jump into opportunities and charts because I know I need to create this chart for, for an opportunity. So I'll jump in here quick. All right, so we're going to create a new chart. So we're going to click on our, our new button. All right, so I'm going to start off. I'm going to use my open opportunities, but I want them to be closing in the next 25 days. So we've already created a view that filters out the appropriate records, and now we'll throw in a chart name. Uh, one thing that we often do is we'll, we'll put a number or something like that at the front of our chart names. It helps us sequence things a little bit and also find things kind of quickly as we're working on them. You can obviously change those later as need be. Oops, we'll change this a little bit. Okay, whatever we need to put on there. So now we'll, we'll choose our field. And again, this is, is relatively straightforward. So we really just need the pipeline phase. And we actually need the pipeline phase for both of our axes. And to make it look right, we'll do our, our pie chart selection. And that's pretty much it. So again, this is a real basic chart. We can save and close that. And now that'll appear on our list. Okay, so next we want to create the link to embed that dashboard that Melissa showed you earlier. So in order to do that, I'm going to need both the CRM org URL, and I'm also going to need the GUID for the dashboard. And in order to do that, it's, it's usually best to use like Notepad or a Word document or something where you can kind of copy that information into. So first of all, what we're going to do is go in and find the org URL. So we'll just go right, it's right up here, so I'm going to grab it as long as we're here. And that's this LedgeView Manufacturing CRMDynamics.com. I'm just going to make a quick copy of that. Now I'm going to jump over to Word. And over here, I've already got a, a starting point for my template, which you could make available. Uh, what I'll do is maybe just make a quick copy or uh, just fill it in here. So what we want to do is is uh, put it in right where it says org URL. So I need to highlight this 
and I'm going to use, whoops, I'm going to grab it with my cursor so I can grab it all, and then I'm going to paste in my org URL, take out this blank space, and I've got half of the work done. Now I need the dashboard GUID in this area, so now I've got to go back into CRM. And for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my dashboards area. So I'm going to maneuver away from the opportunity and jump into dashboards. And I want to find a leads dashboard. So as soon as my list comes up, I'm going to open that leads dashboard and we'll be able to grab that GUID. Okay, now there's a long string up at the top as you can see, but the key that we're looking for is going to be right after the text form ID. So we see it right here. So I'm going to expand this a little bit. And then we want to grab everything from this percent 7B until we get up to the next percent sign. So that specific string is what I'm looking for when I'm looking for the GUID for this particular chart. So I'm going to copy that, or dashboard, I should say. Copy that, go back to my Word document, and now again I can highlight this. Oops. I can paste that in there. Make sure I don't have any spaces or anything. So now I've constructed my string that I'm going to need to embed that dashboard. So what I can do at, at this point if I want to is I can copy this and hopefully I don't have to copy anything else in the meantime. Whoops. Let me make sure I can grab that correctly here. Okay, so let's jump over to um, CRM. Okay, so now we're going to win and we're actually they're going to create uh, a new dashboard in CRM. So we can jump in and we'll create a new dashboard. And again, we'll, we can choose from this list. Because I've got two different kind of types of data that I'm dealing with, one pertains to opportunities and one pertains to leads, what I'll maybe want to do is have the ability to create some sort of text separator for these. So if I use one of these column dashboards, I'll be able to do that. I can put a tab in each one of them. So we'll, we'll give this a name, and this is our sales rep dashboard. And then as you can see, I've got a tab here. So if I wanted to, I can go in and I can I could call this something like that. And then I can throw my first chart in here that we just created. So we're going to grab our opportunities again. And we'll jump to opportunities in the next 25 days. And then we've got to find our chart. Oops, got to grab the my one. There we go. Okay, so we throw that on. That's, that's pretty quick. So we've thrown our our chart on there. And you could add other charts and lists and views and things in there, of course, as needed. Our second tab now, here's where it's kind of convenient to have these tabs. I can now say I want to call this my lead information. Change the title. And now we need to go in and we need to uh, add the link. So we're going to go to an iframe at this point. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to insert an iframe, and here's where I throw my URL. And the only other thing I need to do is make sure I unchecked this restrict cross-frame scripting, and this pass record type should be unchecked as well. It probably already will be, and that's all I need to do there. Now, the one thing you might want to do is expand this out to increase the height, just makes it easier for the user. You don't have to do that. Uh, they would be able to scroll up and down, but we can throw some on there and we'll get that idea. Okay, so I've got that. So let's go ahead and save that chart. That gives us the two items that we've been talking about. 
close out of that, publish. Just wait a second here, and then once this is done publishing, we'll go in and we will uh, take a look at that dashboard real quick. So now I should find that dashboard in my view. There it is. So there's my first chart that I've done, and then here's all of the lead charts coming along with it. So you can see pretty quickly you can throw together a, a pretty comprehensive dashboard and give your sales rep or your sales team access to a lot of great information in a single dashboard.